It is one of the most intriguing phenomenons facing medical science today. In recent years, scientific research has shown a growing number of men experiencing what is called the Kavad syndrome, an involuntary condition where men experience their pregnant partner's symptoms. Just what is the cause of this bizarre phenomenon, and what secrets does it unlock in our understanding of the male today? Kingston University is home to the United Kingdom's leading researcher on the syndrome. Dr. Arthur Brennan is professor of research methods. He first discovered the syndrome while studying for his master's in reproductive psychology. His extensive research into the subject combined with his passion has made him one of the most sought after experts on the syndrome in the world today. The Kavad syndrome basically comprises of physical and psychological symptoms pregnancy-related symptoms in men du during their partner's gestation. Physical symptoms can include things like appetite cravings or aversions. The most interesting symptom, obviously, uh, but is uncommon, is pseudosiasis, which is an abdominal swelling, progressive abdominal swelling during the woman's pregnancy. The syndrome is involuntary and it occurs during the first trimester of pregnancy and then dissipates somewhat in the second trimester and then reoccurs again with greater severity in the third trimester. The syndrome itself used to be known as primitive covard, which is of great antiquity. Men would uh, exhibit ritualized behaviors. A very interesting one was resting behavior. So the pregnant woman would actually work right up to childbirth whereas the man was prohibited from doing that and had to rest during the, um, the latter stages of the pregnancy. Because if he didn't, that could affect the woman. In addition, um, he had to refrain from certain hunting practices. So this is the primitive form of the Caval syndrome. As these eager young minds prepare for life in the outside world, many of them are oblivious to the reality of the Kavad syndrome. Though the question then becomes, how does the next generation view such a condition? Well, I never heard of the syndrome, but my previous background was in animal science, and there was a lot of things and similarities where the male of the species will mimic very closely females and you see a lot also in humans because at the end of the day we are still animals and you know there's cases where you get um, lactation in males. I think it's one of those topics where if there isn't exact scientific proof straight away people tend to rubbish it. I think it definitely is true. I've known people that have mimicked symptoms of their partner's pregnancy and I think it's probably I think it probably is quite a natural thing but like I said because it hasn't been specifically proved people don't tend to want to believe things that can't be proved exactly scientifically. One of the challenges though of the syndrome I think is that certain people attribute the syndrome to well the demands during pregnancy and with the disruption to cortisol in particular the hormone cortisol stress hormone uh, because of the demands of the pregnancy which in turn give rise to symptoms of a very similar nature to those of the syndrome the most impressive um, case i had was a french gentleman uh, where in throughout three successive pregnancies that his wife had, he developed very marked symptoms. I'm Michel Goulven, I'm a house father to three little girls and I'm also trained in psychotherapy. Well, I learned my wife was pregnant, she told me that was September 2005. I was very happy, I was also stunned because it was quite a life-changing event. I knew my life would never be the same again. I first experienced the symptoms when my wife was pregnant with her first uh, baby. Well, my wife is a doctor, so she's always like screening and, and watching. 
and she was the one who actually diagnosed me. Well, the, the first symptom and the most powerful one, in a way, was vomiting in the morning or after lunch, almost every day, for about two or three months. We, we thought it was a bug or something like that, but my, my, my wife, Marielle, believed there was something else going on. And, and it was really unusual. There was no reason why I should be sick. And the other symptoms were, together with that, they, they, you know, I had backache, I had insomnia, I was eating for two, and the final symptom, which was the most revealing, was cravings. I was stuffing my face with absolutely appalling food from the corner shop. Just it was it was terrible. Yeah, the psychological impact. Well, obviously, it's got a numerous psychological symptoms that can arise. Um, but you know, an interesting one is mood disturbance, uh, particularly depression. I mean, men do get postnatal and antenatal depression and some of the men in my study had antenatal depression. Anxiety, panic attacks can arise as well, obviously sleeplessness. And loss of concentration and, and, and distraction and severe cases of forgetfulness as well and memory loss and also cases of cognitive impairment as well. So you get a range of psychological symptoms that can arise. So it, it all fell, it fell into place once we heard about the Kuvat syndrome. And for me, as a psychotherapist, you know, it's what we call predictive uh, identification. But when, when some, someone gathers the energy from another person, which doesn't belong, so it was my wife sending me that energy and me just receiving it. But such a conclusion is not without controversy. From the inception of Dr. Brennan's research, many critics have ridiculed the condition, claiming his findings are misleading. The way the condition is viewed by many people is in a very humorous way. I mean, we know the euphemism for the Kavad syndrome is sympathetic pregnancy, or in the past euphemistically known as love pain. While there is a lot of interest by the scientific and academic community in this, for the most part, people ridicule it, most especially feminists. I mean, when I appeared on TV, um, I had the ardent feminist person there that tried to rubbish the syndrome totally without making any recourse to scientific evidence to back up our argument, which is what I had. So, it does arouse a lot of interest. And for me, as a reproductive psychologist, it arouses great passion. So if the evidence behind the condition is reliable, what implications does it hold for the male role? Specifically, the male role in society today. I think perhaps it scares society in that way slightly because with the feminist overtones of, you know, it's the women's, women's job, it's a, very, it's a really painful, difficult role for the women to have to do and it almost brings men more into the loop of the, of the pregnancy and the childbirth. So I think it does change the man's role. Basically, um, being pregnant is really hard and if I'll be having all those kind of behaviours and at and psychological factors as a man in society, then they will think, hang on, what's wrong with you? Society-wise, it, it gives men a slight better understanding of what women go through, but it also um, enables men to actually interact better with the female species, <laughs> as it were. And um, basically, it gets rid of some of that stigma that men are these macho, hard men that you know have no feelings and sensitive towards women in reality they're not i'm a house father and for me it, it is part of experiencing the whole process of uh, having a child from conception through pregnancy to birth and I, I was present at the birth of each of my daughters and, and as a father yet to, to be able to engage to a full relationship with my wife and, and with my three daughters. So it's, it's part of it, it's part of the process for me. And in a way, to me, the Kuvat syndrome is also a way to create a relationship with a baby before the baby is even born. Which in some cultures, I think in the Central America, they, they, are, they, they have identified that and they believe it's actually the baby sending messages to the, to the father. Which makes sense in a way. I don't quite believe in it, but it is about, about that, about connections between people. So yeah, for me, reflecting upon it was quite something because it's a, 
it is about connecting with other people. It's about you know, being together and being able to understand each other and to know each other. And, and so to experience that with uh, a baby who is not born yet is quite you know, powerful. It's a, it's a very powerful experience. Kavad. As research into the syndrome develops, it is possible that many discoveries will shed greater light on this fascinating subject. For today, education will continue. Though much is left shrouded in mystery, how will the next generation be affected? Only time will tell. One thing is for certain, the Kavad syndrome radically alters our understanding of the male today.